The marketing world has been going nuts for OpenAI's new ChatGPT software, which basically allows you to have a conversation with an AI. And people have been getting it to do all sorts of marketing tasks, like researching keywords and even writing copy. And it's pretty good. We've put it to the test on a range of different digital marketing tasks. We gave the human and the AI the same brief, and then we're comparing the results. We're also showing those results to a professional digital marketer here at Exposure Ninja to see if they can tell the difference. It's human versus AI, let's see who wins. Now we're gonna use a demo fictional business here, an e-commerce furniture retailer selling ergonomic furniture in the US. In challenge one, we're gonna be doing keyword research. Now keyword research is a fundamental task for SEO and pay-per-click, but it can be very time consuming. So can AI help us speed it up? So I gave the AI some prompts and it came up with some really, really generic high competition search terms. So I asked it to be a bit more specific, give some less competitive ones, and it did. It even went down a level when I asked it to go into the ergonomic desk topic. But these keyword search volumes look absolutely wild. <laughs> there is no way 2.9 million people per month are searching for ergonomic office chairs. So I actually asked it where it's getting its keyword data from, and it said it was getting from the Google Keyword Planner. Well, when I checked with Google Keyword Planner, it really didn't agree. And when I ran it through SEMrush, SEMrush also suggested a much lower number. So it's slightly concerning that the AI could be out by a factor of 100, yet be so confident about its data. There's a very different experience of life that you get when you're ranking prominently for a phrase that has 2.7 million searches per month versus one that has 27,000 searches per month. So what about the human? Well, the human went through the same task. Now their keyword search volumes look much more sensible. They've also added cost per click data as they've used a tool like SEMrush or SE ranking. They've given a difficulty score as well. They've also categorized each of these, whether they're commercial or informational, based on what Google is serving up in the search results, and they've given it a short, medium, or long-term priority. They also would have mapped this to the particular pages on the website as well, which allows us to work out which pages are gonna be targeting each different keyword. Now, when I tried to get the AI to categorize the keywords as either informational or commercial, it kind of refused. It said they can be either informational or commercial, which is technically true, but Google is viewing each of these as either commercial or informational. It's much more binary about it. And the reason this is important is because you don't wanna try and rank informational content for a search that Google is considering to have commercial intent because it simply won't rank. So whilst the AI is technically correct here, actually in practice, that answer isn't particularly useful and we've kind of found a bit of a limitation of using the AI for this type of keyword research. But what will the digital marketing professional say? Let's head over to the studio for a game of human versus AI. <laughs> So let's see if our digital marketing pro can tell the difference. Nick, who are you? Where'd you come from? Okay. Hi, my name is Nick. I'm the head of PPC at Exposure Ninja, and I live in the sunny town of Long Eaton. Woo! Right, Nick, <laughs> do you want to see what's up for grabs in round one? Let's go, yeah. You have a wooden crow magpie hybrid and some Exposure Ninja stickers. Yay! Woo! So Nick, all you need to do to win these exciting prizes is have a look at these two columns of keyword research. Your first question is, for an ergonomic furniture e-commerce store, which one of these keywords do you think would be better suited to running a digital marketing campaign? As a prompt, I'd have a look at some of the cert volumes. I don't believe the second lot of keywords are correct. The search volume looks massive. Is that 2.9 million? <laughs> That is 2.9 million. Million searches. Yes. On average, okay. So I'm gonna say that the first lot of keyword research is the lot that I should be using. And I think that that's been generated by a human being using a tool like um, SE Ranking or SEMrush. Nick, you are absolutely correct. Yay. <laughs> Great, so you've got the crow magpie thing and the first lot of Exposure Ninja stickers. In challenge number two, we're gonna be asking the human and the AI to identify top digital marketing priorities. Now to make this as fair as possible, I wanted to set both the human and the AI quite a specific situation. Basically, we described a low converting e-commerce site, some previous Google Ads experience, but it didn't really work out too well and very low organic visibility, and we left it there. Now here the AI actually did a pretty decent job and it listened to my prompt. I said that this was a site that was struggling with conversions and it has picked up that that is a really important thing to address first. I have to say that a lot of these recommendations are quite generic. 
Now, I also wanted to see if it could go a little bit deeper. So I set it a task of working out how to improve just the conversion rate. And I gave it another go, which is where these recommendations came from. Now, meanwhile, the human gave much fewer recommendations, but went into detail in each one. So the human has just prioritized three digital marketing activities, conversion rate optimization, pay-per-click and SEO and content marketing, but it's given more detail in each of these categories. So which will the professional prefer? Let's go back to the studio. Up for grabs in round two is a 10 meter tangled XLR cable and some Exposure Ninja stickers. Oh, I love Exposure Ninja stickers. <laughs> well, you're gonna have a great time today. Okay, so there's three sets. So you just, again, need to say which one you think you would want to use, which one is most useful, and then which one you think has been generated by a human. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Oh, this one's a bit more tricky. Um, I definitely think the last column is AI. Okay. Really, absolutely think the last column is AI. Um, and what makes I you say that, Nick? Actually, because it's saying utilize AI-driven analytics <laughs> to gain. <laughs> Do you think it's gunning for itself? I think. I prefer number one just because of the way it's broken down. So it, it breaks it down into CRO, PPC, and SEO. Um, right. And I actually think that column one is the human written one. And I think column two is also AI. You are absolutely correct, Nick. <laughs> wow. I'm smashing this. Okay, challenge number three is all about doing blog topic research. So this is going away and researching blog topics that this fictional business might want to write. We also asked both the human and the AI to suggest some keywords that they would target with these blogs. Now in this example, the AI has got pretty fixated on this ergonomic term, and these are all what we call top of funnel blog posts. So these are blog posts targeting really commercial search terms. These are also the most competitive terms to rank for. So it's unlikely that a business that was this new to blogging would be able to rank for these particularly quickly. Meanwhile, the human has thought much more about the broader topics and problems and solutions that a person might be having if they were ready to buy some of these. So some of these blog topics don't mention ergonomic furniture at all, but they would have obviously presented ergonomic furniture as the solution to the problem that was being covered in this post. Now this means that on the surface, the AI looks a bit more targeted and focused because it's focusing all of its attention on ergonomic furniture and the different products and categories that a retailer might sell. Whereas the human is thinking much more broader and that can mean that some of these look a little bit less targeted, even though I know the intent behind them. So will our pro spot the difference? In round three, up for grabs is a UK paid media award as won by Exposure Ninja for retail campaign of the year. We beat KFC for this. Some Exposure Ninja stickers. Yay! So Nick, all you have to do in round three is work <laughs> out which one of these blog topic researchers was done by AI, the car from Knight Rider, and a squishy human. Yeah, I, I think I know this already. Immediately? So wow. I think, okay. Yeah, I'm almost, yeah, I'm very confident that column A is human and column C is AI. And the reason behind that is that when we do blog topics, we would be more inclined to use uh, longer tail keyword research. And I don't think that the, uh, the column C has the, the, the right type of keywords for that. Um, you know, if we look at row 14 and 15, we've got daily stretches for middle back pain. And you've got stretches for mid back pain, stretches for middle back pain. You're bringing in informational terms, you're bringing in people who are further down the funnel. Um, whereas the column C has just gone for top of the funnel keywords that are conversion keywords rather than information keywords. So that's why I think that's an AI. You are absolutely right. You've got three from three. You're going to be swimming in Exposure Ninja <laughs> stickers. Challenge number four is about writing a page of copy. This can be one of the most time consuming parts of a digital marketer's job. And because the AI is trained on reading huge volumes of text, this is an area we would expect the AI to perform particularly well in. Version one from the AI was really, really generic, as you would expect. If we give it very basic prompts, it's just gonna give us very basic generic copy. So in version two, I gave it some more context about the business. I made up a story about the founder starting the company because they have back pain, because I wanted to see if the AI could weave that into its content. And it did, it did a much better job, which feels much more personal. But when we compare this to the human output, we can see that whilst the AI generated 
copy, the human has understood that a page of copy on its own isn't actually going to be particularly readable. And it's broken that page into different sections. It's put subheadlines and then it's put bullet points under three suggested values that the company might have. This would obviously make it much more readable and engaging, but it's obviously going to take far longer and cost far more to produce. Now, I did want to give the AI another shot and see if by inviting it to use some subheadings and giving it the business's values, it could create something that was even better. But I actually think the result got even more generic. Let's see if our digital marketing pro can get the full house. Now up for grabs in round four is the Exposure Ninja water bottle and mug combo set. Now these are no ordinary water bottles and mugs. This is a bamboo water bottle. So after you've finished drinking it, you can eat it. And we've yep. got the mug. This is a standard issue mug. Actually doesn't do too well in the dishwasher. So probably hand wash only on a cold. Um, I'm afraid we're out of stickers. But in order to win, these fantastic prizes. I'm going to show you two pages of copy and you have to work out which one you think was written by the AI and which one was written by the human. Oh, this one's quite tricky. I My gut says that the uh, column E is human written and column C is AI written and my thinking behind that is that column E has humanized the content, so it's related it to the founder. Um, but it's really tight. I, I wouldn't, I think if, if you put column C's copy in front of me standalone, I wouldn't have clocked it as AI. Same if column, and if column E is the AI, I definitely haven't clocked it. Interesting, interesting. Okay, well, this is actually a trick because they were both AI. The difference is column C had a basic prompt and column E had a much more sophisticated prompt. Now I'm oh. going to show you another version. Now which one of these, does this change your opinion about which one you think might be human written? So you can tell that the, uh, the one you've just revealed is, is written by a, a content expert. So you can see it's got clear headings to space it out. Um, it uses bullet points, so it's easy to read, um, it attracts people with, uh, it attracts different kinds of customers, customers who want more detail, but also customers who want a brief overview. So I think that when you see the three of them together, I definitely would have gone for A as being the, the human element. But what I will say is um, when it comes to the copy, I think that it's much stronger uh, the AI copies are much stronger than than the other, than the blog topics and the uh, the strategies and everything. So I think if I was going to use AI for anything, it would be for writing paragraphs of copy. Amazing. However, I think that I would only use it for paragraphs of copy and not do a whole page because you don't get the things like the uh, the readability that you would get from human written copy. Bang on. Yeah, great. That's the that's the takeaway I've found from this as well. Like. Firstly, if you start with just a generic prompt for the AI, it just produces generic garbage, basically, that's basically unusable, just like long form written spam. Yeah. <laughs> it's like spun trash, basically. If you use a more yeah. advanced prompt, you get a better output. But even then, you need a, you need a human to think about like dual readership path, like you said, people who are scanning and people who are just like reading it. No one actually just sits there and just reads a page of copy on the internet, do they? Particularly for a product category page. So this yeah. sort of the head headings and thinking about how the page flows, it doesn't seem like the AI is e able to do this, even with a lot of help from the prompts yet. Nick, you've cleaned up, you've aced this. Four out of four, congratulations. <laughs> well, technically it was three and a half because I still got tricked by the trick question. That's true, that's true. Well, maybe I'll just send you the, the water bottle then. Of course, there are some more fundamental questions about what happens when people start moving to AI type chatbots instead of going to Google, and therefore about the viability of some of the strategies that we're talking about here. But one thing is for sure, no matter how sophisticated or widespread this tech gets, businesses will need humans to help them use these tools, get found and get customers. This is a really exciting time to be in marketing and particularly in content marketing. In this video, we break down a model that you can use, AI or not, to build out your content at scale over the next year. 